Thank you very much. I believe everyone has no doubt that AI is changing our daily life from many aspects. Here, I would like to take the opportunity to share that um, the AI can also transform the way that we explore the uncharted domain, the scientific research, um, by accelerating the scientific discovery. So I'm Hai Guang from AI for Science, is a newly founded organization within Microsoft Research. So allow me to start with this uh, busy blackboard. Maybe you recognize some of the subject. This is including many disciplinaries. And some of them you may lack. Some of them maybe you don't really like that much. This is the modern scientific research, multidisciplinary. And uh, it is very difficult to get someone who knows maybe more than two subjects very well to do in-depth research. And we think AI has the opportunity that can master the knowledge that we accumulated in the past. As a matter of fact, there has been a lot of progress in applying AI technology to study specific problems, specific type of problems, from electronic structures to large molecules like protein structures, and also from very homogeneous materials to very complicated catalysts, even to the microscopic fluid dynamics, like the atmosphere dynamics. We believe there's an opportunity that we can unify those efforts to have even more powerful AI tools to help us to do better science. So in the following, I would like to elaborate what we have done in the past one year or so. Before we do that, I would like, would like to share our understanding of the research uh, paradigms. So after this, maybe you'll see AI for science is not something strange come out from nowhere. So we start with doing observation and experiments. And with mathematical formulations, we can have analytical equations to describe and predict the motions or the phenomena, physical phenomena. However, some of those equations are very complicated to solve by pen and paper. So that's where the computation came. These three paradigms are very well known to most of the people. Since we are moving into this information age, in this new century, the data-intensive research or data-driven research become more and more popular. It became the fourth paradigm of scientific research. It's also known as e-science. And now we are at the age of AI for science because of the advancement of deep learning models, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence. So we have a big boost due to the AI technology. And that's what we are focusing at this newly founded AI for Science organization. So the keyword you will hear multiple times in, in the following, the keyword is speed. We can do scientific research much faster than previously with AI technology. So if you remember this speed, then I think my job is done. So in the following, allow me to go through some of the efforts we made in the, in the past. Uh, I grouped them into the four categories. From the left, you will see the scientific foundation model, which is a unified foundation model that have, uh, has a comprehensive understanding of scientific knowledge with generalization capability. And the, the second one is how we understand molecules we see them as three-dimensional structures, and also they are changing their shapes, structures, so that's the kind of dynamic view of those uh, molecules. It helps us to better predict their properties and functions. And the third one is to, based on the predictions, we can design or optimize those uh, molecules, materials, to reach our desired uh, properties. 
And the fourth one is how we can model microscopic objects and even simulate their dynamics. This is uh, uh, specifically targeting to the weather or climate models. So I will go through them one by one. Let's start with the scientific foundation model. It is a general purpose technology for natural sciences. This is a foundation, it's not a specific tool. So if we will incorporate uh, our accumulated knowledge as scientific prior in the form of either coded physical laws or learn from the data. And it can handle multiple or very diverse uh, inputs that includes text like large language models, models and also the description of the molecules in their 1D form or graph or three-dimensional structures. We also will leverage the large language models you heard a lot uh, today and also in the past maybe uh, as controller to generalize those tools, the knowledge we learned from this scientific foundation model for, to support very diverse applications. So with this powerful scientific foundation model, we would be able to transform an array of scientific pursuits. So I will just give you two examples. The first one is a, uh, well, those two examples are before we get this uh, scientific foundation model, which is still in the training process. So these two are before that. On the left, you see this is called a graphomer, which is the best molecular foundation model. It won uh, two years ago the KDD Cup competition and also the Open Catalyst Challenge competition as the number one, the best performer. And on the right, you see this is a biology uh, GPT, which is the best biomedical language model before GPT-4 released. So you see there's the right line here showing that the performance of human experts on answering these uh, biomedical questions. We see actually earlier last year, the BioGPT has already surpassed the performance of human experts. And with a larger model, a larger version of a BioGPT, we can even further improve the performance. So by un unifying those uh, molecular foundation model and also the large language model, we, we will get this uh, scientific foundation model that will, we believe and we expect it will be more powerful and have, have uh, broader applications. So let's move on to the next one, beyond structure representation. We want to see how those molecules behave in their native states. They are not rigid objects. We have three kinds of tools at different levels to study their dynamics and also using the generative AI method to investigate their functional relevant conformations. So I will go through them uh, one by one in the following slides, but on the right you will see one example that we study one protein, which is a big molecule, have multiple conformation states. That's uh, all captured using this uh, uh, generative approach. And each state can be further quantified using uh, the more accurate uh, simulation approach. So from the top, this is a kind of a, a based on quantum mechanics, the highly accurate calculation it serves as a gold standard for uh, quantification of a molecule states and energies. Um, so we have this uh, kind of accelerated simulation uh, method. It is 10 times faster than existing methods. Uh, using a single workstation with one single GPU, we could simulate this uh, sort of uh, folding uh, of polypeptides into this uh, helical form within a week. Usually, uh, usually it uh, takes uh, more than a couple of months on a supercomputer. But still, that is too expensive uh, computationally. So we developed this kind of a, a machine learning force field approach to approximate the 
quantum mechanics calculations, this allows us to handle much larger systems like you see on the right. This is a protein complex. Um, we can also simulate for that for longer time to better understand their interactions with dynamics. This is has close to ab initio accuracy. It's called, we call it the chemical accuracy. That means uh, we can reach experimental measure or measurable accuracies. Now we reach to the very bottom. This method is based on generative AI. It allows us to sample very diverse structures that can cover the whole functional relevant space. Uh, space. So you see each dot actually corresponding to one structure. We see that uh, it has very good coverage uh, compared to the control lines, which was obtained by using uh, supercomputers, distributed computing system. If we do that with a single GPU, it will take 10 years. And we get those uh, uh, yellow or orange dots within 10 days with a single GPU. So that's kind of reducing the time from a year to a day. This kind of acceleration is what we are after. So we are not just predicting multiple confirmations. We can also predict how they change from one state to another. As you can see in these two examples, we observe this kind of opening and closing motion from, of a kinase protein and also a membrane protein that transport drug molecules. So those are essential to understand their functions. With those tools, a, for example, a universal molecular geometry model and the, the AI-powered MD simulation, we actually apply them to design better drugs. This is the recent uh, comp competition that we were ranked, that our team achieved the best performance out of uh, 878 teams. So let's move on to the the third of topics that we design and optimize the molecules and the materials. I would like to cover three type of uh, uh, systems, the proteins, drugs, and the materials. Let's start with the protein. So protein is just like a linear chain of amino acids. And if we change the amino acid, naturally there are 20 types of amino acids. If we change one amino acid at a position, then its property will also be uh, influenced. So that means if we keep changing that, then we can get different types of properties. This is uh, uh, what we call a uh, fitness landscape. If we want to design a better protein, so it's better to ha know how the landscape looks like. Just like when you are going out for hiking, you need to have a kind of map to see which way to go. So this is uh, landscape prediction. It's a very challenging problem because this is a vast space with rigid uh, landscape. We achieved the best performance by using a pre-trained AI model and incorporating biology domain knowledge. Uh, as you see in the middle, we get the best uh, uh, correlation compared to the experiment of the uh, measurement. And with this model, together with the reinforcement learning approach, we can navigate in this very high dimension uh, space to design better uh, proteins that to meet our desired properties. This can be applied to design uh, like uh, antibody drugs or for protein engineering. Let's move to this uh, drug discovery. Uh, drugs are essential. You know, uh, it's cure diseases, keep us health. And uh, the, one of the essential steps is to know how a drug binds to a protein. The protein is the target of the drug. So we developed this fast and accurate binding prediction method. It achieved the best accuracy, um, as you may see, be able to see on, in the table. And meanwhile, it, it is also much faster than similar types of the, this kind of prediction method by two to 400 times faster. It depends on the system, though. Not only just the screening those uh, drugs we, we know in the uh, uh, chemical compound libraries, we can also generate novel uh, molecules that are tailored to specific uh, drug bond, uh, binding pocket. Uh, we actually apply this method to fight infectious disease such as tuberculosis or COVID. 
Based on the feedbacks from our collaboration, uh, experiment collaborators, we actually, from our generated uh, drug molecules candidates, there are, they have already identified several very promising molecules that can be further developed, maybe move into this uh, clinical stage later. Let's uh, move on to this uh, material design. Materials are essential for our lab as well. So usually we know materials as a kind of uh, different kind of compositions of uh, elements. Uh, but here we would like to see, to present you that we are trying to understand as some other dimensions such as temperature and pressure. So we have developed a AI model to allow us to explore the materials world in this composition space, temperature space, and also pressure space. Uh, with that one, we have significantly improved the, the accuracy in quantification of materials, such as energy, force, or pressure. In this slide, I'm also showing two examples. One is, uh, you see this uh, movie, is showing this uh, catalytic reaction, this chemical reaction simulation. This couldn't be done with uh, quantum mechanics calculation because the system is too big. And now, we, using this uh, AI model powered simulation, we could handle even a million items so we can observe these uh, chemical reactions. And the, on the right, you see there's a heat conductivity prediction. Heat conductivity is also important, right? So that, if we have a good cloth that can keep us warm, also, in the computers, the cooling system is very important. So we need the good materials have either very high heat conductivity or very low. So we use this AI model to have this kind of very high throughput approach to screen or even generate materials that have desired properties. It's related to the sustainability and the efficiency and also the green energy. So I'm going to finish very soon. So the last one, but not least, is the microscopic dynamic uh, process emulation or simulation. We have this model that can fuse multiple types of inputs, the signals, put them together in a unified representation, and then decode them. Oh, forgot to mention, we also inco uh, incorporate the physical laws, uh, such as uh, NOAA-Stroke uh, uh, equations, those things uh, into this uh, climate or weather model, we can use that model to make predictions about uh, extreme weather, for example, for weather forecasting. Um, so with all that, I would like to conclude uh, in this page that AI can help us to better understand how nature works and to accelerate scientific discoveries we can use them to solve some pricing issues related to health, environment, and climate. And with all that, we can have a healthy life, a happy life, and also a satisfying life. Thank you.